pursuing a certain lifestyle of let's say the that girl aesthetic is actually leading you to becoming that broke girl also no one tells us about how to actually manage our money and how to actually build wealth it's kind of seen as something that we need to figure out by ourselves or know by ourselves by default and even asking about or even bringing it up in conversations is frowned upon especially if you're a woman hey what's up you guys and welcome back to my channel hi if you're new here my name is mariam and we talk about all things fashion and lifestyle if you aren't subscribed already now is the perfect time too right off the bat there is one thing that we need to talk about that is very problematic and that is the way that the media has started to portray self-care it seems like self-care now has become something that we have to purchase it comes in package forms such as maybe a body lotion a body wash skincare a bag clothes etc you name it pretty much selling us all the notion that to be taking care of yourself you need to be spending your money it cannot be done otherwise obviously that's very problematic and is leading us all to spend more money than we have ever before myself included in this video we're going to talk about actually being rich versus looking rich and how pursuing a certain lifestyle of let's say the that girl aesthetic is actually leading you to becoming that broke girl we're going to talk about things like FOMO influencer culture self-care culture and also overrated advice when it comes to money so let's first start by talking about influencer culture and the fear of missing out which is also coined as FOMO. It's that nagging feeling that you feel that everyone out there is living their best life and you're sat at home not being able to do all these amazing things. And influencer culture through its nature can really amplify that feeling. This can both create a sense of urgency and inadequacy, pushing you to chase after items and experiences just for the sake of keeping up. Without wanting to sound like a broken record, we all know that the entire influencer culture is a very polished and pristine looking universe where everything seems so desirable, every experience, every Every purchase is so magical and is always in a way pushed towards you whether directly or indirectly that you need to buy the next best thing in order for you to keep up in this rat race that will never ever end because there's always something new being pushed towards us whether it's our Stanley Cup our road lip gloss I mean back in the day with the whole Gymshark craze I feel like that's died down now compared to how it was before so I used to be the crazy girl who would literally sit in front of her laptop and wait for the next Gymshark launch buy the newest leggings wear it for like a few weeks sell it on Depop and buy the next new one and and it was a vicious cycle until I somehow stopped like maybe three or four years ago. I myself am not perfect and I have fallen to these traps in the past and I want to talk more about this because fun fact professionally that's what I did as my job. I was in the back end of all things influencer marketing. There is just so much that goes on behind the scenes and how like things are portrayed to you guys and the gap in between can be a very interesting space and that's where I was and that's what we're going to talk about today. Beneath the glossy looking universe there's actually a whole different impact impact that it has on us that is negative and that's the impact on our wallets, emotions and overall happiness. The influencer culture can lead us to really living a lifestyle where we're constantly spending money on items that we don't really need and it's constant and you're never able to keep up because you can never actually keep up in a world where to be a part of you need to keep buying the next best Thing. It's a never-ending rat race that will leave you feeling drained emotionally and financially. I don't think it's a net negative. I think it can be if you're not conscious of the kind of content that you are consuming and the kind of creators that you are following. We need to be more conscious about who we're actually following and the subconscious narrative that we're building in our minds just by looking at new things all the time. Now, I want to talk about something more interesting. I find this topic so interesting and that's a topic about the self-care culture. Treat yourself. You you only live once treat yourself now don't think about tomorrow focus on the now I mean as a society all together we have become obsessed with the word self-care just to give a bit of a metric to it on TikTok the hashtag self-care is close to 30 billion views even with meme culture the girlies are girly pop a I'm making all these memes about self-care which honestly some of them are funny self-care right now it seems like it has to be the next item you purchase whether it's to do with a skincare item bags clothes you name it while those things can be a part of self-care it is not the entirety of self-care. Self-care should actually be, you know, say no to yourself now, for example, when you want to buy a bag or a blazer, whatever it may be, because future you will be more comfortable the next month when the next paycheck hits. It seems like everyone in a way has forgotten that self-care is about caring for yourself 
today and tomorrow not only just today so this is where self-love comes in self-care pursued without the awareness of your specific needs say for example at the beginning of the year you told yourself that you want to save x amount of money by the end of the year and you aren't on track to getting that and you constantly just tell yourself oh let me just like you know treat myself in the name of self-care that is you doing a disservice to yourself in the name of self-care because self-care is also about treating future you and not only current you when you pursue self-care without having the awareness of your actual needs it can really cause emotional mental and financial consequences that you could easily avoid in a time where everything is instant instant message buying items and being delivered to us the next day i mean we've lost touch with the art of waiting and you know lingering i mean sometimes it's okay to linger and wait there is beauty in it and the best form of self-care you can do for yourself is to care for future you because that is the hardest to do because that's later on on. you're not going to reap the rewards for that right now but you will later and you will love yourself so much more for doing that because the softest form of love you can show yourself is being patient with yourself and saving things for yourself later on not everything has to be consumed right now now let's talk about something very important than something that can be quite controversial and that is money more so the overrated advices that we get from our parents or the older generation talking about money is always a funny thing to do because it's always seen as a taboo and something you don't talk about and something you need to have figured out all by yourself but even if you bring it up and ask questions it's frowned upon especially if you're a female most of us grew up in households where when you talk about money the only advice you really get is just save two words and that's it while there's a lot of value in saving your money no one actually tells you how much to save what format to you it's just a blanket statement of just save money and everything else will be fine no one talks about investing your money no one talks about how to actually break down your paycheck that's kind of for you to figure out all by yourself but here's the truth the truth is is that you don't have to do it by yourself what i found is that having even one friend whom you can have candid conversations about money with whom you can share how much you're thinking of saving in the year how much you have in investments how much you plan on investing learning how to invest a friend who, with whom you can discuss your salaries and what you should be asking for just having that one friend whom you can have these conversations with is so valuable even that itself it's hard to bring up money conversations with friends but what I have found is that it's actually well received because most people are scared to bring it up themselves and if you make the first move you'll actually surprise yourself when you bring up these topics amongst your friends and see that everyone else is actually more open than you think my channel is not about finance i talk about fashion and lifestyle but i feel like this ties in well with all the content i make about luxury bags or like luxury shopping all that stuff all right guys so that's everything for today's video let me know what you guys think i really enjoyed filming this comment down below your favorite part of the video subscribe if you aren't already and also give me a thumbs up if you haven't yet i love you guys so 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 much and i'll see you guys next time bye you go